live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone, live here, the CUBE coverage at Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent 2018, our sixth year covering Amazon, now 52,000 plus people here, packed house. This is where the industry gathers to really kind of check out the future, where the state of the cloud business is, what it means to enterprise. I'm John Furrier, the host of theCUBE with Lauren Cooney, co-hosting me this week on set one of two sets here. Our next two guests, Jeff Moncrief, consulting systems engineer, Stealth Watch Cloud, at now part of Cisco Systems, and Ernst Hagsman, product marketing manager, JetBrains. Um, welcome to theCUBE, guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Six years now we've been covering Amazon. We were here when kind of people didn't really understand what it was. We, we saw it here, so Jerry Chen just became a venture capitalist in Greylock, and we're like, this is going to be big. It's big. But the big news here this week is on-premises, okay? You guys at Cisco, you own premises with routing, networking. Developers are programming applications in the cloud need to run on-premise. It's a big theme. It's all kind of coming together. It's kind of the first validation this year that on-premises is not going away. Right. And cloud is becoming more prevalent for data analytics, for coding, for DevOps, but now working seamlessly together. You guys agree with this, recently announced a deal with AWS. Right. You have networking, which is a critical part of the holy trinity of infrastructure, network storage compute, powering a new class of software development and tools. What's your view on this? I mean, give us a take. Yeah, so uh, from a, a Cisco StealthWatch standpoint, like you said, we see that customers are not necessarily going away from on-premise deployments. Um, a lot of organizations have got large data centers and colo facilities that they still run, all right? And they've also got workloads in the public cloud. So what we see is you know, any, some kind of mixture of organizations that have still got bare metal servers and virtual machines on premise that they need visibility into and want to protect. But then they've also got public cloud workloads that are virtual machines. But then they've gone beyond virtual machines and they're in things like microservices and serverless and containers. And they need a solution that can protect all those different environments. And that's where StealthWatch comes into play. And I want to get your guys' thought on, on this because obviously now security used to be a blocker for cloud. Oh, we can't put stuff in the cloud, it's not secure. Now security is there, baseline at least, needs more work. Um, you got to have that visibility and you guys have a programmable strategy for the network. There's now coding. VPCs are becoming more important than ever before. Right. How is security evolving as compute starting to get more powerful Storage is storage, data's not going away, it's only growing with IoT and IoT Edge with connectivity. Networking now has to up its game. Right. And, and application developers don't want anything to do with all that anymore, they want to just program. So what's this mean for, for people? What's for the, security, right, for security. security. Yeah, so what we're seeing, and I mentioned a second ago, was the expansion into microservices, serverless, cloud native, if you will, uh, and organizations are continuing to go that route but what they don't realize is as they expand into those different technologies, they're actually creating an increasing uh, attack surface, if you will, right? They're not really thinking about that. And what they're doing is opening up multiple new points out to the internet that are vulnerable and to exposure and risk, right? So um, they're not thinking about securing those new environments that are deploying and that's where we come into play also. Awesome. All right, let's talk about uh, JetBrain. What do you guys do? What's the relationship with Cisco? How do you fit in? What's the story? So let me start with introducing JetBrains a little bit. You were just talking about all these various spaces where people have to run their code nowadays. Um, yeah, if you want to develop for all these environments, you need tools that allow you to develop for all these environments. At JetBrains, we're tooling professionals. What we do, we are software developers, we make tools for software developers. We really um, want to give the developer all this power in their hands to be able to develop inside, for example, containers and step through their code as they go inside these environments. Um, of course, our own products and our own um, services, they are all, a lot of them are hosted on AWS, and Cisco comes in there and helping us make sure that all of our services that we have online remain secure. And the relationship with Cisco is part of go-to-market, you guys share products together, what's the... So the relationship is JetBrains is actually a StealthWatch customer. They've been a customer for a few years now, uh, and we actually protect all of their Amazon workloads that they've got deployed in the Amazon infrastructure. Anything from EC2 instances to RDS, Redshift, Lambdas, pretty much any sort of service that they're using from a compute standpoint in Amazon, StealthWatch Cloud's been protecting for a few years now. So with Kubernetes and now Lambda, the old days was 
which is still great, you spin up an instant, 10 seconds. Lambda, you can do this in really, really high velocity. How does that change the tooling? How does it impact your world as a customer? So for us, as a customer of Stealthwatch, um, it impacts us that uh, we have to, of course, make sure that whenever these lambdas fire, we know what's going on and we can see what's happening. And one of the things we really want to do within JetBrains, we want to give our developers, we want to empower them, we want to make sure that they can experiment, that they can make new things. And a tool like Stealthwatch really helps us make sure that when our developers are out there doing things, we can still maintain that we're following the best practices and everything stays secure. How does automation guys weave in? Because Kubernetes is a big battleground right now, we're seeing an important one as orchestrating and managing clusters, certainly the state of application data, unsta stateless applications also with APIs is obviously growing. Right. Visibility is critical. But automations may be right around the horizon. Is Kubernetes at some point going to be automated away? And if, if so, what's that look like from software standpoint? Because yeah. it's dynamic now. So what we see from a Kubernetes and a container orchestration uh, perspective is that the Kubernetes itself is it, designed to do the automation, all right? It's, it's elastic, expand and contract, right? But what you may be looking at today is a small Kubernetes cluster with a couple of nodes and a couple dozen pods. Then all of a sudden tomorrow, based on load, you could be looking at hundreds of nodes and thousands of pods. Okay, a massively increased uh, attack surface, if you will, right? Yeah. Visibility into and trying to figure out what's going on there, right? Uh, Stealthwatch Cloud, luckily we're there. We're inside Kubernetes today. And what we do is we deploy automatically in the Kubernetes environment in, in a way that allows us to expand with you automatically. So as your cluster expands, we will give you complete visibility into everything that's moving east-west in Kubernetes as well as north-south. So uh, it's a very simple deployment. Doesn't matter where Kubernetes lives, we've got you covered. If people are going to download StealthWatch from the, uh, the catalog, right. what is it? How would you describe Right, so StealthWatch Cloud, it is a SaaS offering, all right? So we get asked that a lot just today over in the booth. You know, we've got a lot of questions about where do we put our sensors, where do we put the collectors? Uh, people, if they're having a hard time wrapping their heads around the fact that it's straight API calls, okay? We're bringing in CloudTrail, we're bringing in IAM and CloudWatch VPC flow logs, right? And we're bringing it all in, all automated over the API, AWS to AWS where we live, and it is a SaaS billing offering, right? So there's nothing that you have to go deploy it's a five minute integration. You can buy it right there on the AWS marketplace, like you said, for public or private network monitoring. Uh, and it's a subscription billing. So it's a true SaaS solution. So as you're looking to kind of expand you know, your footprint in this space with Kubernetes, is there any thought of you know, some sort of code donation to Kubernetes to actually increase your footprint among users and get them more engaged? Or is that something that you've you know, talked about, thought about, things like that? Donating code? Donating some code. Yeah, I don't, I, honestly, I don't think there's anything that we've ever discussed about donating code okay. or anything like that. What about you guys, Ernst? Donating code to the Kubernetes project? To well, just to increase your footprint, right? So you would have it right, available right. As, as a component of Kubernetes and people would put that's it into a, their a great distributions. Idea, actually, yeah. 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 It's not something that I know that we've discussed, but yeah, I mean, if we could deploy something that would be open source, that we actually part of that project, uh, that would be a like, huge visibility for us. And I think that's big sense too. If you look at what's going on at Cisco, one of the things I'll just give you guys a prop here is that the DevNet developer community is really taken to cloud native uh, and with DevNet Create, DevNet at Cisco Live and Cisco Barcelona, we've been this past year, what a sea change. I mean, you got command line interface dudes going, hey, I need to be dashboard oriented, right. meaning I got to automate stuff. So the notion of programming the network, it's not a foreign concept to network engineers. They're pretty smart. Right. They get things. So how is this world evolving? How is the persona of a Cisco customer that needs to get more software development shops going? What's it like? I mean, is there future dashboards? Is there future going to be scripts, uh, event alerts? I mean, manage it. So how do you guys see that persona evolving? I think what we see, and you can probably relate to this also, Ernst, is that more and more organizations, like it doesn't matter how averse they are to cloud and, and new development technologies, more organizations are going towards a DevOps oh yeah, for sure. uh, framework with CI, CD, mm -hmm. uh, constant you know, continuous integration and, and continuous delivery, right? So it's hard to avoid the fact that that's where the paradigm is shifting. And in doing so, as we move into more cloud native and serverless capabilities, uh, you're looking at things that don't necessarily involve operating systems and IP addresses and traditional endpoints. And that's where most organizations are going. So, and so from a security perspective, we've got to go there also. 
Talk about uh, your um, relationship with Cisco as a customer. Are you happy? What's it like? How's the product? So far, we're very happy. We've had some great experiences with uh, the onboarding of Southwatch Cloud. Um, yeah, we had some, of course, you know, as you're starting to get started, we needed a little bit of assistance getting used to the tool and getting started and getting everything configured. The support was very helpful and it really helped us get started. And then um, at some point we actually did some of this cloud automation and we set up a Terraform script so we could actually automatically configure uh, Stealthwatch Cloud into many of our AWS accounts. Awesome, so. great, great stuff. Final question for Cisco, what's next for you guys on the product side? Anything going on? Give a quick plug of what's happening. Yeah, I'd say what's next for us from a, a Stealthwatch Cloud standpoint is you're going to see more integration with the Cisco portfolio. Uh, we're integrating with the Cisco Identity Services Engine, integrating with the next-gen firewall, uh, integrating with the new encrypted traffic analytics that you've probably discussed here on theCUBE before. So it's a tighter portfolio integration because that really sets us apart. Awesome. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the insight. Good to see a customer here. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate the thanks commentary. Very much. Good job. Thank you. Kubernetes at the, head, start, at, the, at the center of all the action with developers, cluster management, scaling up, Lambda, serverless. This is the, really the fast world of compute changing the game and having programming gold networks is key. The Cube bringing all the coverage here, live in Las Vegas for AWS reInvent 2018. I'm Jeff Lauren Cooney, stay with us for more coverage after this short break.